So this is love. We guarantee our Benica shears. Uh, we have a warranty far beyond anybody else's that I know. And um, even if they drop them on the floor, they have no receipt, they have no warranty card, but they know they're Benicas, and they, we know they're our shears too. Uh, it's covered. And this gentleman dropped a discontinued shear. This is the A7. Um, dropped this on the floor, and can you see? It broke and the tip broke off. So we told him, oh, well, yay, you get a brand new pair of shears we're gonna send you and you can choose from this one, this one, that one, the other one. And he was like, no, I love my shears. So I said, well, I can't grow it back. It's not like hair. And he says, well, can you just take the other end off? And he says, and when you're taking it off, he says, I said, well, I can make it maybe, you know, seven inches, make it like six and three quarters or something like that. So after reading the directions on my Dremel, and putting my safety glasses on. We're gonna see how this works. I don't normally do this kind of uh, work on scissors, but um, <laughs> this may be a video that goes viral. Let's see what happens to it. This is something new for me. Maybe I should have put this in some kind of vice grip. Good way to damage shears for evaluation. I'm so many little particles flying up in my face, so you definitely need to be wearing glasses. There we go. So now we want to make it look more pointy, and then we want to sharpen the shears. To sharpen it but I want to try to take a little bit more off of the tip so let's take it apart and before I do the ride line oh I can take off these extra glasses now if you don't wear glasses when you sharpen it might be good to wear some kind of protective thing over your eyes just in case um, there is dust and things like this that fly around I don't think he's ever had these sharpened. He's had these for a number of years because they've been discontinued for quite a while. But um, normally I would do these at 45. These again, once again, I'm going to do these at 40 just because I'm doing so much work to them.
going to create a brand new ride line. I might need to use something a little bit more aggressive in this. Let's see what I have over here. Well, let's try it with this first. This is 2000 grit. And I've completely removed the ride line. I'm working it hard to try to reestablish the ride line. And let's see what's going on. Oh, coming back pretty nice. You know, part of what we're dealing with here is a really nice quality shear. Um, the only reason we quit carrying these shears, well, there's a couple of reasons we quit carrying them. Um, one, these are cast, they're not forged. And a lot of the sharpeners, because we sell most of our shears to sharpeners to sell to stylists, and a lot of our sharpeners don't like cast shears because if you have to bend them, you can't do it or hammer them or what have you. Um, this is this particular shear, and I'm not, I don't have a ride line here, I don't have one back here. So I'm coming up here with my pressure, that tip hanging off. So I'm kind of reshaping the inside of that blade a little bit. <coughs> and then blending it all in together. <coughs> you hear my cough? It's spring here and the pollen is just off the chart. Mixed with some of this dust, I imagine. But if you can see that in there but we've got a ride line the ride line is thicker here than here because that alignment's a little bit off i'm going to work it a little bit more so the 2000 grid actually worked pretty good in re-establishing my ride line so this is like i go back now and do the outside of the blade off my stone a little bit because I may have working it so hard. This is actually a 1200 grit diamond stone. Um, I normally would go over to the sink and do this but this is kind of a good in between before I do a whole lot of flattening. So it gets things back to close to back to close to being flat again. Kind of in between working. All right, so I'm going to go back to my worn 800 grit because that's going to give me a little better shine. And I might be able to do this without going down to other grits. is unavoidably uneven where the tip breaks down but that's as I said these are cast shears so we would not be able to bend them even if we wanted to so this is one of the times when the ride line would be uneven and it's okay it's the only way to make it work so all I'm going to do is take my burr off still feel burr back in here Got it. Clean this off a little bit. More water. Got a little soap in my water. Makes it a little easier to work with. See, there's my burr. Yep, looks good. Feels good. Let's go into the polish. Pop it out. I could go to some um, finer and finer grit to get a little bit shinier, a little bit nicer looking. Um, I was set at 40. I'm at 45 because I'm assuming this is going to be used um, just for straight cuts, not slide cutting. And it needs a little bit more roughness or bite to it.
very pleasing to me. I like it that when people, when they buy our Banika shears, they feel like they can, they can have it through their career. And in this case, even if they drop it and do something really crazy to it. Now I'm double checking, making sure I haven't um, taken off my, um, my ride line. This is one of the ones, I always say the square peg goes in the round hole, but this is round and both holes are round. So where would you put it in? You just have to know to put it in in the bag. And this is what we call an internal clicker plate because it sits, I mean external clicker plate because it sits on top and this little nipple goes into that hole. Every time I say that, I think about the German guy that I trained with. Um, that I use that word nipple, and he says, oh, is a, this is a, he says, uh, in Germany, the, the nipple is a woman's, uh huh. And I said, well, it is here too, but that's what we call it. I said, what do you call it? He says, we call it noses. And I said, no, noses. I said, well, sometimes they have more than one nose. But in this case, this only had one nipple, so. All right, so let's see how it cuts. Cuts dry. Cuts wet. Are those tips coming together? That could be rounded off a little bit better at that at the tip. Feel pretty good. After I pop, after I do this rounding off though, I want to cut with them again and make sure they're not pulling. And they're not, they're cutting good. And we can always test them on the hair. And I'm basically checking the tip because that's the big thing. She's a little bit at the tip. I'm a little concerned that because that we changed the radius that it's going to affect the cut of the shears, how it pushes hair. Let's make them a little tighter. So, yeah, they do a little bit of pushing, but from the center down, they do pretty good. And all things considered, for an old shear that's been dropped on the floor that cannot be realigned, I think that's a pretty nice, pretty nice shear. And those are considered done.